Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to talk about CryptoMat, which is a fantastic uh, way of getting material and object IDs out of your 3D scene into a compositing program without having to jump through a lot of hoops. Now, CryptoMat was originally you know, supported on Nuke and probably Fusion, but now it's supported on Adobe After Effects 2020, which is fantastic because it really opens up uh, the use of CryptoMat to a lot of people. I'm also using V-Ray Next uh, with Moto here to demonstrate this, but CryptoMat is also uh, supported on Octane for Moto, and I'm sure will eventually be supported on Moto's default renderer, but I don't believe that it is at the moment, as of, what is this, January 2020, already, 2020. Okay, so how does this work? What are the limitations, and how do we go about doing this? Well, um, we've got this scene here with some uh, items from Megascans, and rendering out here in V-Ray GPU or V-Ray Next, which is using the GPU renderer. And there's a couple of things we want to do to set this up. And first of all, I, it should be noted that you can't really do CryptoMat from the RT rendering interface. So this is V-Ray RT going here, which is similar to Moto Preview. It's sort of the RT real-time RT renderer where you can sort of make adjustments before you go to the um, bucket-based renderer. And in this case, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and I've got to pause here. But if you look at the um, this little disk here where you save the images, we don't have access to a 32-bit layered open EXR format, which is what you really need to save out uh, CryptoMat enabled images. Now, the V-Ray image format might be able to save uh, CryptoMat layers. And there is a utility, I believe, that will convert V-Ray images to uh, open EXRs. But that's kind of a roundabout way of doing it. The other issue is you cannot use, if I go over here to the uh, main settings here, the progressive sampling uh, method does not work with CryptoMat. You have to go to adaptive or one of the others. Adaptive is, is a pretty common way of doing this. So honestly, that's not a huge deal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stop the uh, RT rendering here. And I'm going to go over here to add layer and under V-Ray render elements, I see CryptoMat. And that's really kind of all there is to it. You've got uh, right there. And right now that's going to save out uh, uh, material ID mats. I can also click item for item ID mats. You can do item hierarchies. So that should theoretically work if you have a hierarchy of items. They should all uh, get a mat as well. Um, group, I'm not quite sure if that's going to work. I haven't tried it yet. Levels depends on like sort of how many different items and overlap like a pixel can have. Like so if we have overlapping items here, like if I click on this pixel, It'll understand both the bowl and the fruit and things like that. Um, six is usually, they say, enough, so you typically just leave that there. And then safe render elements, that's really to work with um, the Nuke version of this. So we just leave it checked and we're fine. So really, we're just looking for item and material. You might just want item, you might just want material. Um, it depends. So that will, that will increase the size of your file eventually. Uh, if you have more of those checked. And I think what it does is sort of an open or a, a XML type naming scheme um, within the OpenEXR file. Okay, so got that out of the way. And uh, so let's just add a couple of other render elements to this scene because there's some more support for those within After Effects uh, 2020 using the Extractor plugin, which I'll cover or at least touch on in this video as well. So by render elements, I mean these here. You'll notice like world normals. That render element um, is used by CryptoMat to get some of the uh, uh, data it needs. It's also actually that one may not again that may be used by CryptoMat, but it's maybe used by the denoiser as well. And in this case, I've got the denoiser um, active, and so that'll save as its own uh, layer as well. You can see there is a denoised RGB level in here as uh, a layer. So all these are going to save with that OpenEXR image. Um, you know the diffuse filter. We're going to see defocus amount. We're going to see noise level. All of these different layers, alpha, are going to be saved with that image. And I can even add more. I can go over here to the render elements. I could add an ambient occlusion. And I can add, let's say, like a Z-depth as well. You see them over here. And those are all going to be packed into that uh, OpenEXR multi-layered uh, image, which is, which is great. Uh, but it results in gigantic images, which you need to know if you're going to render out a 3,000 uh, frame animation and then download all the files like I did. <laughs> it's really big, really big, hundreds of uh, megs per uh, image file. Anyway. Another thing you'll want to do is make sure you render in CPU mode. GPU mode does kind of work with CryptoMat. It'll render out the item masks, but it will not render out the material masks. So when you go render with V-Ray, you want to make sure you're in CPU, not GPU. So hopefully they'll uh, remove that limitation soon because GPU obviously can be a lot faster. 
But for now, make sure you're rendering in CPU mode if you want both the item and material masks to be saved to the scene. All right, the renderer is finished, the file has saved. Uh, if I look up here, I can see some CryptoMat um, uh, channels up here right now. So we'll just kind of take a look and see if there's the ambient occlusion one. We'll go and take a look and see what this looks like in After Effects. All right, here we are in After Effects, and I've got a comp here set up. And I just want to mention that really to get the most out of these uh, deep color images, you want to be in 32-bit per channel um, uh, depth here, and not just 8 or 16. Although CryptoMat, I think, will work in those uh, either of these uh, bit depths. You really want to be on 32-bit to take advantage of the increased uh, color bandwidth in these uh, OpenEXR images. And then there are some importing options, which I'll get to in a second. You can import, do some cool composition importing, uh, but I will show that second. First, I just want to bring in this crypto test image, and then I'm going to drop in the comp here, and here we got it. Looks pretty nice, right? Let's do, uh, let's add the CryptoMat effect. So actually what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to duplicate this. And so we've got two of them here. I'm going to add CryptoMat to the top one. So effect and under 3D channel, we've got CryptoMat. And you're thinking, okay, there we go. Um, I can pick any of these items, it devolves to item by default here. So I could pick my vase or I can pick uh, this apple or I could pick this apple or I can actually hold the shift key and do multiple items like this or hold the control key and cut them out. So I'm just actually gonna pick these three apples here like that. And under output, you'll see, actually under selection, you'll see these sort of codes. Um, that's sort of the, I believe it's sort of the XML type uh, encoding that's been done with this. And if you're um, a really technical user, you can probably get in there with some scripts and do some stuff with that and something like Nuke. But in After Effects, the simplest way to deal with this is just, I'm looking here at output. I can then change the output to matted colors. So now I've just got the matte here like that, or I can say matted RGBA. And so I have them right there, I'm turning off the lower layer, or uh, matte only. And then I could use that as a mask or a, a luma mat. So if I uh, duplicate this bottom one, for instance, and say do a luma mat, then I'm again, looking at these guys. So there's a couple of different ways to look at these. Um, I'll just stick with, uh, why don't we just do um, the matted RGBA. So we'll just do matted RGBA like that, turn that back on. So there's my apples. And then I can do whatever I want with those in terms of maybe I want to change the color of those apples. So I just go over here to like color correction, maybe do a little hue shift or something, uh, do something drastic there. We'll make them, I don't know, blue. Blue and purple looks good. So you can see the power of CryptoMat that it's got these built-in matte channels. Let's say I want to do some sharpness on this guy right here. Again, I could just duplicate here. Maybe I'll just call this uh, apples so I remember what that is. And I'll call this vase. And again, um, add CryptoMat to 3D channel CryptoMat. And then I select the vase and I can say matted RGBA like that. In fact, this one, maybe I'll do it the other way. I'll just say uh, matte only and then I'll duplicate um, my original here and do a luma mat on the base. And I'm, actually, I can pre comp those if I want to, like that. And then, yeah, let's do maybe some, let me zoom in one more time. And maybe I want to do like a sharpen effect or something like that. Just do a bit of sharpening on the base so detail pops out a little more. That probably won't show up. Eh, it'll probably show up on YouTube a little bit. I don't know if the compression will mess with it. But you can see like sharpening. So boom, I've sharpened my vase. Looks a little more bumpy. My apples are different colors. You can really go in and, and, and tweak the heck out of this, right? Maybe I want this back wall and the background a little bit darker um, just to make my image uh, pop a little more. So again, I'll just affect uh, 3D channel, crypto mat. Um, we'll do back wall and floor by using shift key. And we'll just do a matted RGBA. And we'll just maybe do an exposure color correction on these guys. So there's my exposure and I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit. So focusing more on my apples here. Keep in mind, we also have the opportunity to use material masks. So if I zoom in on these apples a little bit, there's actually one material for all these apples, right? All these textures are UV'd onto uh, one single image and, and it's um, just one material for all the apples. So I can use the material mask option. So here I've got my apples here. Let's say I just duplicate this one. And if I look at, um, let me just collapse that. If I look at the crypto mat here and just set it back to colors, you can see that I've used the item mode to pick a couple of these guys. I can always you know, pick more if I want to by holding down the shift key. Um, but if I want all the apples picked, I actually want to click on the layer and switch this to material and it'll tell me it'll 
basically invalidate what I've already selected, which is fine. Um, hit OK. And then you can see the colors have changed a little bit. Now I could just click on the apples and get all the apples at once you, uh, because they all have one material. And again, I can go to matted RGBA or however you want to do it. And uh, we'll just turn off the hue saturation one and um, uh, you know, whatever, do something else. Actually, I'll just leave that on. So you can see, uh, you know, here using um, the material mask, I've got all the apples. Using the item mask, I've just picked three of them. So really useful being able to pick materials and items within the scene. Uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. You can see how, you know, incredibly useful this is. And it, it didn't require hardly any setup at all, right? And so you know, Cryptomat is just, it's just super useful. In fact, it's one of those things, kind of like denoising, once you start using it, you just, you're just going to turn it on in all your scenes and always use it. Downside being the image files are, can be gigantic because especially with denoising on, you're, you get all these other like world position channels and normal channels in there that you may not normally want. But speaking of that, let's take a look at some other options here. Um, I'm actually going to hide all these guys and I'm going to duplicate this one down at the bottom. We'll just call this uh, extractor test. And we're going to add, um, I'm, just, I'm just isolating this guy. We're going to add the extractor 3D channel uh, filter on there. And this one is actually pretty interesting where it allows you to pick any of these layers. So I can go over here under layers and I can pick like world normals or I can even mix it up with RGB. I could say world normals Z for blue, but I might want uh, reflection. <laughs> we'll just say a defocus amount for green. You'd never want to do this, but you can switch up channels here as well, which is kind of cool. Um, but really, you want to go to layers and let's say, let's do ambient occlusion, right? So that's something we rendered out. It's not available in the crypto map, but it is available in this um, uh, extractor here. So I turn everything back on, maybe. Um, I may want to do something like uh, do some levels on this. So do some color correction and go to levels. And, you know, I just want to capture some darks maybe in here just to get some you know, more contact shadows, something like that. So I'll get some more blacks and something along those lines. And uh, multiply this on top of my image. And, you know, that's how you may want to use, this isn't the best image for this. I'd probably never do this. It's really darkening up those legs a lot, but you can see you get a little more um, shadows here with this uh, ambient occlusion layer on there, if that's how you like to use it. Uh, but again, the extractor plugin, which is also new in, in 2020, I, I believe 2020 lets you grab some of those other layers in there. Now there's also some new import options, which I'll just show really quickly. Um, so I can also come up here and say import. And we'll just go to the same file again, crypto test. But this time I'm going to have create composition checked and click import. And it's going to give me some um, options here. Import is composition, pre-composed layers, contact sheet. I'll keep all those on. It's not a sequence. That's fine. And it's going to add a folder here, crypto test. And inside this folder, we'll see we have a contact sheet, which is, you know, March could be useful for you. What it'll do is it'll just put all these um, all the layers that are in that big open EXR on, on a contact sheet, so you can take a look at it. But it also does a, an assemble, like it assembles these into a um, single comp for you. So if you look at this comp, you know, it, it's got the RGBA on top, which is the denoised RGBA image. But you can get to any of these other uh, layers in here um, as well. So I may want to do something like maybe I just want the RGB uh, color denoised, like this one right here. You'll notice that that is in linear. It hasn't had uh, gamma correction applied to it. So I can go up, up here uh, to effects and do a color correction and apply. Um, we'll just go to the exposure and put the gamma correction to 2.2. And there we're you know, back to our, our normal um, uh, gamma. But you may just want the you know, RGB denoise. Maybe you may have some effects on the effects results, like some uh, uh, color temperature or blooming or something like that you had from V-Ray that you don't want on there. You just want to get the raw denoised RGB images. They're right there. And you can get those. Um, you know, This uses a combination of extractor and, and it pre-comps everything for you. It just does here if I look. It's just using the extractor, right? But it's uh, pre-comping all these for you. And so you know, that's useful. It's nice, right? You can bring in... Uh, uh, the ambient occlusion there and multiply that on top and then um, adjust that a little bit however you want to but anyway it's a useful thing for after effects and, and working with cryptomat like i said it's just it's just kind of magical the first time you do it okay well there you go it's nice to see these high-end features uh, like cryptomat filtering all the way down to after effects after a couple of years 
Uh, who knows, maybe uh, deep pixel uh, compositing will be next. We'll see. I really recommend you pick up V-Ray next if you are looking for a really competent rendering engine. One of the things in particular about V-Ray is that it has a fantastic cloud service, V-Ray Cloud, which honestly uh, can make or break a project if you get big projects in. So definitely take a look at V-Ray uh, next for Moto if you have a chance. Yum, yum!